Hello, everybody. Uh, just in a few minutes, I will start the webinar, so stay on. Okay, hello everybody. This is Daniel speaking here and uh, welcome to the part one uh, webinar series where uh, from good to great about how to write uh, Milton and post processes. Um, as a support manager, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I received uh, many, many times uh, in support uh, cases uh, various support cases uh, regarding to the build turns and uh, a lot of uh, how to implement the features. Uh, also, I've seen many, many nice solutions uh, done in post processors. And basically this webinar series, in this webinar series, I want to collect all those informations and um, to you, I basically choose the uh, most, most important features and how to stuff um, of how to write the Milton and post processors. Uh, basically, today, as it is a first part, I choose to show you um, the, the get functions. And uh, I will talk also later on uh, the, about the standardization of how to write the GPP and the VMID itself. But first, let's talk about the get functions itself. So many, maybe maybe a few already heard about functions and other uh, programming languages. Uh, for all of you who never use it in SolidCam or never heard about it, I will just uh, explain you what it is. Uh, so as you know, the variables itself, we are using uh, them in order to show and output the, the information they, they hold. But uh, the functions are something a little bit different. And uh, we started this as a pilot project a few years ago uh, with uh, some uh, uh, Milton projects where we wanted to receive some of the informations that are located in SOLICAM and they are already calculated. Uh, and But it was very hard for us to implement them inside a, a standard trace uh, uh, as you already know about them. So we were thinking that uh, the, the get functions would be actually the the best way to do it so we start start with this and uh this is basically the list of all available uh get functions that are developed in solicam now the as i started with with explanation about the variable so basically when you output the variable it will output the information about uh, basically the value of that variable but what is the function the function is something like a procedure that you already know. It basically enters to the functions. It will make a lot of, uh, it can, in, what is actually in the function, it depends, yes, but it can consist of many commands, if statements. But the difference between the procedure and the function is that the function always returns some value, okay? As with all this uh, list, I think it will be more better if I go through the example of each of this function showing you how actually you can implement them and how to use it. And probably you will then better, you will have a better overview of how 
uh, to use it and also what the functions are at the, at the end. Also, here at the bottom, I just mentioned that these commands can be used to retrieve already calculated informations. Now, what are already calculated information? I would not say it's, they are calculated, but I would say they are already defined. Uh, for example, like a, over here, we have a get axis limits. As you already know, in VMID, we have for each axis, you need to define the, the axis limits, also home reference. So how to receive the information, such a information inside standard trace? It will be pretty hard. And also just think about the, um, the name of the variable, how it will be. So it, it, it will be very difficult. So this is one of the reasons why actually we developed the, the, the get function. So let's get started. Okay, so first, the very basic one, I would say. It's it's a get so I can version. Um, probably, as uh, you know, um, in, inside our trace, we are actually receiving uh, the uh, information about what the revision of the software actually is. This is nice. This is okay. This is good. We can use this information uh, for the various if statements if you want to check if your particular uh, post-processor is used in that particular revision, that's great. Now, what is happening after some time, after let's say two years, you don't actually remember this revision, what was actually the, the actual uh, version itself. Um, so how to how should I get the value or the, the what was the version back in that time? So this is where the get so I can version actually functions came in. As you can see, this is the format itself. It doesn't look anything special. It looks like a simple var variable itself. It's almost, it behaves like a simple uh, variable, okay? But with later some other functions, you will see the, uh, uh, that this is actually not the case with others. So how to use it? So first, uh, you it is optional to define some uh, string variable and in this case i just name it like um, a string which is a local and then it's a solid cam version and then basically you just put the value of that uh, defined variable and you just write get solid cam version and later on i just print here you know that i want to print it out okay and the output basically it will be the version that you're currently using so let's see that in actually in solid cam how actually that looks like so over here, I have just the standard, uh, let me just uh, take this off if it's possible. Okay, so um, what I have here in front of ourselves, what you can see here, it's pretty much standard uh, uh, Milton part. And uh, in this example, I will use the NTX 2000, the latest generation over here. Uh, to demonstrate you basically all more or less all the uh, all the functions that I will show you over here guys it's uh, on this post itself it's the upper turret with the b axis uh, lower turret with three axis uh, main and sub spindle okay I'll just use open the post uh, some of the things are on another screen so I'll just uh, open uh, post processor inside the GPP for all of you uh, who are not familiar with uh, uh, with our recent update, we actually completely moved to the Visual Studio Code. Um, uh, if you if uh, you want to know something more about it, please just contact so I can support. Um, so basically, I will here choose uh, something uh, that I have like. Uh, I have here the head. I think here the head, it's basically the header of the post. And basically I, here I can play with the stuff. So first of all, what you can see here, I, I don't have to choose where I want to print, uh, where I want to use the functions. The most important thing is that the function is within the procedure. So it cannot be out of the procedure. So I cannot write here, get solid cam version. Okay. So this, this thing will not work in this case okay so this will be completely wrong but you need to write it actually inside of the procedure so as i described here i will just try to put it let's say like after the date and time i just like to print out the value 
And as I described here, I, it was like a local string, and then I said uh, like solid cam uh, version, and then I actually said that after that I would like to assign that value, so get solid cam version. That's it. And now I, you can actually just print out this value. So let's I will just copy this, just paste it here, and just instead of date and time, I will just uh use this variable so nothing so special okay i'll just go over here and just print out the value now what is very interesting is that i don't need to you know run the whole process i just can do it for any operation it it, it will completely work fine i just click okay here it's just under my another screen so you don't mind okay Okay, so on the header, we have actually the solid cam latest version of 2020. So it just print out the value, okay? Now it is not, as I said, it is not really necessary to do it in this way. Uh, you can you can do it in other uh, uh, other ways. You you can basically take it and just print it over here. Just make sure that it's inside the parentheses. You can also print out something in the header like solid cam version okay and you can ju just do it like this and uh, you can completely ignore what i did so far here so it can be also the format it can be also within the, the curvy brackets of 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 it yeah and then i can just again just generate the g code i have uh, 360 oh it's it's uh, it's uh uh, it can be if it's a string, so I have to convert it to a string. So the previous actually thing was was a completely okay. So okay, um, what I wanted to say also, yeah, where we can use actually this variable. As I said, you can use it in within the if statements if you want particularly to use it in some particular version. So this is the right um, uh, version where you can actually. Uh, this is actually the right uh, function where you can use uh, this. And what is very great about it, so once the, the customer updates the the, uh, the the solid cam or you are using different versions, you don't have to worry about it. The, the value will automatically be recognized and actually will replace it with the actual version itself. Okay. Okay, back to the, to the presentation. Okay. Um, yeah, one thing here. Uh, let me try to. I think. Uh, okay. Now the same function name. It's basically used also in Venter Cam. So if you're using the Venter Cam, uh, don't use like get Inventor Cam version. So this will not work. Just use the get Solid Cam version also, but instead of Solid Cam here, here it will be Inventor Cam uh, version. Okay. All right, uh, the next thing, the next uh, get function is the get turret number. Um, in, in very old uh, Milturn post, the getting the turret uh, number and the table number was very important um, uh, in the time when there was no channel IDs. Uh, it was very important to get this number, okay? Also very important can be used uh, for the um, uh, for the uh, Siemens controller uh, to get the, the stuff for the spins on each table or each turret, you can also assign the the, the number itself. Basically, the, the the format is you get the turret number. Uh, it can be inside the procedure, uh, but it, it doesn't have to be. I just put it over here, guys, uh, so you can also enjoy the example. And you define it as integer. Okay, so the value that the function will return is now an integer. Previous example was it will it return as a string. So this is extremely important. As you can see here, I'm just uh, creating an integer that is a target number. And then uh, this is something that you see for the first time. And as I told you, it will be different. Is that I'm assigning, I'm using the same format, but I actually am assigning the, this target number and I'm just saying like get turret number. And then inside the parentheses, 
you need to actually just say which submachine you want actually to get a target number. As you probably know, the submachine is the, it's a, uh, um, how should I say this? It's unite of uh, the, the turret and the table itself. So if I choose, okay, for please give me the, the turret number of the submachine number two, you will receive what turret or the table ID actually that submachine actually have. So with this, you will just, you can use this, uh, the system variable like a submachine, but it is really not necessary. You can, instead of submachine, you can just write the value itself and it will work completely fine. And just here, I'm just want to test this and you just write it down and then the output will receive actually the integer itself. Now with that, uh, we have also the same like get table number. It works equally the same. So I'll just go a little bit faster with this. So it works, the format is also the same as well. So let's see how that actually works as well. So I'll just go to, to SolidCam and just very quickly, I'll just go to the VMID. Our VMID in this case have four submachines, upper thyroid main spindle, upper thyroid back spindle. We have lower thyroid with main and back spindle. If you click on this uh, folder of submachines, the IDs of the submachines will be written over here. So it goes from one, two, three, and four. Now, if it's not like this, so if it's not starting from one to uh, four, you can always do a right click, you know, on this, and you can renum renumber it IDs. But be careful. This this is a very this is extremely uh, dangerous if you already defined the post processor, as you will need to remap the whole things again. Okay. So do this in early stage of defining the VMID. This is my best advice. Okay, now, uh, as I said, uh, each submachine consists of the turret name and the table name. I can easily just click on each of those and I can I have here the tab, uh, turret number. It can be any number. And also the, for the main spindle and sub spindle, we also have the numbers itself. So basically, I can go now back to, to the pose. And again, even if it's a header, I'll just continue showing you the, the various example here. So I'll just uh, make here some space and I'll just start to type local integer and I'll just say it here like a, like a turret uh, number. And I can do the same thing for the um, uh, table number. And basically what I'm going to do, I'll just use the two similar uh, functions. It's equal to get, uh, sorry, this one, it's turret number. And here we need to type the submachine. Now with this, you need to be very careful. As I use the header, which is on the very uh, beginning of this of the program i'm not receiving i'm not sure if actually i'm receiving the submachine id okay so there is a big chance that if you are using some of the information over here that you're not receiving then you will have a problem and and the function will return an error okay so you, in, because of that uh, let's say that we want to receive the turret information about the submachine number three and same thing for the table. So I'll just say table number and for the table number three, it's for the basically, it should be a lower turret main spindle. I just can now print out the values. So I can just create something like this and I can paste it and here it will be uh, the table name, table number, yes. And of course, maybe for I'll just create a new block before and actually the new block after. Let's let's try if this works. So again, I don't need to, this is interesting. I, I don't have to create a G code for everything. I just, you can, you can basically create for any operations. As I said, this is not trace dependent. So this is information that we already have in our VMID. So just by generating the G code, this is like looking into a future, basically it, you can just receive the value and that, that will be it. Now I received some error here, three, four, uh, seven, four, of course, three, 
three, four, seven, four. Let's see. Uh, oh, it's something here. Uh, yeah, it's the previous issue that I had. So let me just turn that off. Let's try again. Okay, so let me just move this one here and just click okay. Okay, so what we have here, as I said, we received the value. So the turret number is the number two and the table is one. So let's go back to the VMID. So for my submachine number three, I'm using the lower turret and my main spindle. If I click on the lower turret, it's number two. And for my main spindle, it's table number one. I hope you get a little bit more sense of how to use this, um, how to use the functions itself. Okay, back to the presentation. Okay, the next one. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, these functions can be used, you know, for in in uh, Siemens controller. But I think the 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 best uh, the best function for that actually might be the get drive unit name. The the get drive unit name you will receive an each drive unit uh, parameter. It is located over here, as you can see here inside the VMID. And each drive unit name have here. This is the recent uh, parameter that we add. And you will see here by default. If you never, uh, if you never define such a um, such a parameter, you will you, it will be basically an empty string. Uh, the drive unit name, it will be the the, the, the what function returns will be a, a string, um, uh, and um, and uh, the, the how it's called the argument that we have to use is actually original job name. I will get back to it uh, pretty first. So let me go to this parameter in Solicam. So why this is very important? This is so super nice because, for example, here I have the upper turret, I ha have the drive unit. I don't have, obviously, here anything. I, I didn't write anything here. Uh, so I can, I can just type, uh, you know, like on final controllers, this would be very nice because for the upper turret, this would be like uh, one, two. As you know, the, for the upper turret, it's one, two. For the main spindle, it's uh, it could be, where is the main spindle here, drive unit. You can basically type P11. Uh, for the sub spindle, it will be P22. So this helps you to easily assign uh, the, uh, the P codes or M codes for your spins in particular operations, okay? So it will easily, it, it will help you to easily, you know, format um, the, the, the spins for your drive unit, okay? Now over here, I have one, ex another example here uh, that I prepared for the citizen machine. And this is exactly the same example that you found in, um, in presentation. As for the spin spinning format here, I can basically, search for the drive unit name according to the original job name. And basically here, I'm just changing the spin M code. If it's S2, then it's 20, 23. If it's S3, then it's M80. But as I said, for the final, it can go directly. Like if it's P11, you can just use this uh, spindle unit and it, it, it will be nice. Uh, why this is so good? This is good because the change, you don't have to perform all the way inside the GPP. If something changed, you just change it inside the VMID, and then you don't need to worry about what is happening inside the GPP. So this is like a linking of uh, capabilities, what you can do. And basically, this is a linking between the GPP and VMID as much as possible. So as everything what I'm showing you right now, it's basically like a linkings between links between uh, the GPP and the VMID. Uh, back to the presentation. And here I'm just showing you how actually you can use it. It's pretty much straightforward uh, with get drive unit name. And here you put the, uh, the as job name. Now the as a job name here, I create like user defined variable, but what it has to be, it has to be original job name, which I mentioned over here. And the most important, it must be without a formatting. If you perform any formatting of the job name, the function will not find this, and then the, the 
you will not receive any information about drive building name. So be careful with that. Okay. Okay, this one is very nice. Um, get plane rotation order. Um, this function basically returns the rotation order to as a string according to each submachine. And basically it the format is just like get plane rotation order, and then we have the integer, and you need to put or for which submachine you actually want to, to do it. The way how it is, it's pretty much the, the same thing, plane rotation order. Uh, you de define it over here. Also, you put it here. The argument itself is the submachine ID. Also, you can write down the um, the value itself if you want. And this is just for to test it. And then the output will be a string. So be careful this, it will return a string. Now, in the next slide here, I just mentioned actually which parameter that is. As if you can see here, we have a tilting plane definition. And inside the tilting plane definition, we have use kinematic axis. And we can use also to use cycle 19 or use the customize something else. So it will return different values, okay? Now let's see how that actually looks like. So let me just go back here. Okay, let's go over here and let's go to the VMID, uh, go to the tilting plane definition. And as you can see here, we are just using use kinematic axis. So nothing so special. I'll just leave it as it is. I'll just go to the post and here I'll just create another new block. I will create a local string and then plane the rotation order. And then I will just copy that one and just assign, you know, I want to get a plane rotation order. Now, what is very important, once you start to type the, the, the Visual Studio code, if you if you applied the plugins and uh, the um, and all the functions actually we will recognize this and you can just basically type enter and he'll automatically complete the complete the function name okay so you don't need to do anything more and i'll just type here one and i'll just write the plane rotation order oh this is also a very nice trick you can just take this do a right click and just convert to, out, uh, to output block, or you can just do it also like control B. And basically he will print it as it is like this. Of course, I want to do it a little bit different. I just want to print it over here like this. Uh, also this one, I want to move it down. Right, okay, so uh, I'm using some shortcuts that I'll try to explain on the way. Uh, as you've seen here, I just moved uh, this particular uh, line up and down, you can do that uh, with Alt, Alt key uh, uh, and arrow up and down, or with page up, page down, depends on your settings itself. And now I'm just going to save it here and just generate the G code. If you write everything down, you will receive, you know, the just the G code itself. And let me go to the to the first here. And as you can see, we are receiving the information that it is kinematic. So let's play a little bit with, with the VMID. So I can go here. I can go to the tilted plane definition. And here I will use the cycle 19. I'll generate the G code again. Now it's cycle 19. And now if you go to the plane definition here, I can go to customize. Now this is very important. For all of you who already know how how, uh, how the custom plane works, great for you who not, I'm, I'm recommending you that you watch some of our previous webinars. Um, basically, if, if you have uh, the Z, then Y tag and X tag, it means that it's after the rotation. And if you if you do something like this, it means that it's like ar around um, original coordinate system basically, and you will receive different output for these functions. So let's start like for this one. So X Y Z. 
And if I now generate the G code, we have X, then, then we have Y and Z. In case of Y tag and Z tag, you will receive something different. If I go like Y tag, Z second tag and save it, and then generate the G code, also the output will be different. Now, this is so useful, especially for all of you who want to support various um, uh, uh, tiltings, uh, like a, for a FANUC, where you can do also with Euler angles, but hey, you can do it also with Roll Pitch Joe, and as you know, it can be Q1 to 3, 2, 3, 1, and all the combinations, now you can actually put inside your post. Now, once you've done it inside the GPP, you don't need to worry about what actually settings is used inside the VMID. By changing the VMID settings, everything will be then taken care of inside the GPP through this function. And that's, I think, what is very, very, very nice. Uh, as, I, as I just mentioned here, X, then we have with the first tag and with the second or with the two tags, it's displayed uh, like this. Okay, back to back on board. Get an axis name. This was a very, very frequent request for, for many, many, many years. Uh, during the post processor creation, especially when you are doing a template, like for the five axis millings, you actually want to know around which axis you are rotating not only the letter of the axis but also the vectors so the next um, next get functions is also get axis vector okay now both are for both you need the same arguments and this is the output basically you need to say what is the the submachine and what is the axis id <clears throat> so okay let me show you how you need to define it so this is the first uh, uh, function where you, you need to use more than one argument. So this is the first time when we're using actually two arguments. So I'm creating here like a, a procedure, and then I will basically declare the local strings. And in this case, I define like a first axis letter uh, and second axis letter, okay? So I'm talking here about the rotational axis, okay? And then uh, I'm assigning the first axis letter I'm saying get axis name. Then I need to open my brackets and I need to put two arguments. The first argument, it's submachine ID. Second one, it's the axis ID. But what the axis ID actually is, it is, it is depending of which axis you actually want to get. If you're looking for the, uh, the X axis, then you just put one. If you want, if you're looking for the Y axis, then you put two. If you're looking for Z, it's three. For the first rotation axis, it's four. For the second rotation axis, it's five. Okay. So for the first rotation axis, I want to use four. So I just insert the four. For the second axis, rotational axis, I'm using the same thing, just I'm, I'm writing here five. And my five axis kinematic is, I just say here AC as an example. I hope this makes a lot of sense. Um, this is like how to get an axis name. Uh, it's a, like a first level of information. The next level of information is basically the, for the vectors. But what is very important is that non-kinematic axis cannot be retrieved as a value, okay? I will explain everything in the, uh, in the example itself. Um, uh, the axis vector, it's a little bit different. Uh, it, you need to put five uh, arguments, okay? The first two, it's the same as for the previous one. Um, but you need also to put three additional, which will feed the values, okay? And of course, the, here we have something like, which is an integer as a result. And he said like a get axis vector, and then you need to print the submachine, the, the axis ID, and the three 
vectors that will receive this information okay then you can print it out here i actually make a mistake here it should be uh, different and the output will here actually it's it's okay so let's see what what is all about so let's let's go back to the solid cam um i will take an example of of uh, let's say upper turret here with the main spindle i think this is very interesting for me and i want to see this c axis okay now here in the sub machine i have here an axis order as you can see i have five axes here then all five axes are kinematic axes when i say kinematic axis i mean i mean that all they all have assigned something yeah so this is the z axis linear x y second rotation and first rotation axis now which one here it's not uh, I would say in, if you're familiar with this machine, it is A axis. A axis is the axis of the sub spindle. And this is non-kinematic axis. If you want to check that out, I will go just to the lower turret back spindle. And here, what you can see is the sub spindle here on the lower turret has three linear axis and one rotational axis, which is the first rotary axis. The A axis has no assigned it's it means it's non-kinematic axis so this axis we cannot find the name itself okay so this is very important for you to know okay so let's let's see how to get this information done so i'll just write here a local uh it's a string and then i would say uh first uh rot axis letter it's pretty long one but it's okay and then i will just assign the name of get the uh, axis name and then as i say you need to put two values the first is submachine i would say i will use the submachine number one and the axis id is four this is the for the first rotation axis and basically i can just print it out And here I can just print the new block. I'm using the control D to du duplicate, and then I will use the Alt key to move it down. <coughs> Fine. All right. Let me go on the top. And over here, I have it's the C axis. This is nice, okay? So there's a tons of examples where you can use this, especially for a template. You can put, for example, in the formatting, in the formatting, you can use it. So basically even, uh, let's say where I use this one. So get axis name one four, and I can go, uh, let me try to find this. I know maybe you will see this confusing, but let's say, okay, so here, I'm using axis letter on main spindle, and here I have the axis letter on sub spindle. And by using here, it's C axis. Okay, that's nice. I'll just replace it with this get axis one four. That's it. Also, I can do the same thing over here. That's it. So, what is so nice about it? Um, let me find some C axis operation here. Uh, upper turret main spindle. Yeah, this, this, this should work. Yeah. Let me go G code generate. Click OK. Click OK. Everything works fine. Super. We have here some G code. And over here, we have also the C axis where it is. Here it is, the C axis. OK, great. Now, let, let me show you here what will happen now if I try to change the C axis. So if I try to change from C to, I don't know, let's try to with F. Of course, this doesn't make sense at this moment but I'll just want to show you the power of this function. So I'll just click OK. Click OK. Yes, I'll just go to, to this one. And now instead of C, I change the formatting for hold my pose with F. So in the templates, this is, this is awesome. Yeah. Let me just move this back here. So I'll just change this to C. Okay, 
let's go back to the to the post itself. Here we are, and I want to show you also the things with the get axis vector. Uh, I'll I'll just continue over here. So I'll create a, uh, this is something new uh, with the axis vector. It's a little bit more difficult as you need to create this integer, inter integer, uh, which is the also the local one. And I will just call it the results. Okay, it's I'll explain you what it does, and then I will create a local numeric for variables that I want to receive this information, and then I'll just call it I don't know uh, vector x, then like vector y. Uh, sorry, here I missed this vector y, and then uh, vector z. All right, and now. Now, this is a trick. Now, this function always returns zero if the fu if function fails and receive one if functions if everything was fine with the function. So this variable will be always zero and it will fail the function if something is wrong. And uh, it will return one if everything is fine. So I'll just assign it i will never use this value okay this is just a variable that will you know say if function worked or not that's all so practically i'm not using this as printing out the value or anything and then i'll just uh, type get axis vector and then here you need to put like a submachine i would put like uh, one i'll put like four for the id and then i need to print out this four uh, sorry these three uh, vectors now what is very very important it must be separated with the commas if you if you forgot to put the commas again it will reserve an error uh, and now we just can print out uh, the the uh, to see the results i can copy this vector y vector z vector y vector z and here i'll just print the new block over here. So let's see the results of our axis vector on the first uh, um, on the first submachine uh, with the first axis with the first rotational axis. Let's get there. G code generate. Click OK. Yes, I would like to refresh this for the first channel. Okay. So my first rotational axis letter is C, and the vector is 0, 0, minus 1. If I go to my VMID, look for my C axis, you can really see that the vector is minus 1. <laughs> you can probably imagine a ton of things you can do with this. Yes, you can, automa you, you can make a high-level automatization of how your uh, a GPP will behave based on the VMID itself. Okay, I, I think I don't have to talk too much about this because this is really um, this really opens a lot of opportunities. All right, um, something about getting the axis value in label. Um, this is how actually the the function looks like. Uh, the name itself, it's okay uh get axis value in label <coughs> pardon and for this uh, function we need actually three different um uh, three different arguments is the thing that the name axis name and the thing label so basically what we are trying to, to to get let me just go to this ah i have no example for this but basically if I go to example, and if you go, go to the setup and go to the channel synchronization, uh, let me open the channel synchronization here. Okay, as you know, each label consists of this axis. What you know or you didn't know that each of these axes consists of the value that, uh, that was previously, uh, how should I say this, with updated machine, this is where uh, the value uh, where the machine status is after this job okay 
So then we have the value. So for the x-axis, y-axis, z, b. So we have the latest information. So basically we can take this information whenever we want. But what we need to know and what we need to give is the uh, sync data name, axis name, and sync label. Now you probably can ask me, okay, what is the sync data name? The sync data name is the setup itself, the name of setup. So I can say here webinar. So you can also easily see this. And I can just generate the G code with trace five. Hope I will receive something. No. It says, okay, it says like 3466 value, it's out of range. 3466, whatever, 3466. Hmm, interesting. Is it because maybe I changed this for, for the webinar? <laughs> I hope not. Let me try again. Yeah, this is interesting. Okay, so let me go to the beginning here. Okay. Uh, on the very beginning here, you will receive the setup. Okay, here it is. Sync data name. It's for the setup. Um, this is a very important variable. It's the system variable, obviously, that will tell us, okay, from which channel synchronization you actually want to take the value, okay? Um, so back to this, I will I will actually go back immediately to the to the example itself. Uh, let's continue here. I will uh, create this. Um, basically, it's, you will receive the value, so it's a numeric. So we need like a local numeric, and I'll call. I don't know. Let's 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 uh, make like a for the b axis. So it will be local numeric uh, b axis in uh, label and then i will just say that this value is equal to sync data name axis name it must be in semicolon uh, like this so basically i want for the b axis and then the sync label the next one is the sync label so this is very important so for from which sync label we would like to actually receive it we have so many sync labels here, one, two, nine, and I would like to receive it from the second one, which is minus 10. Okay, so let's see about that. So two, and just, uh, of course, I forgot here to mention like get axis value in label, and then I'll just print it out. Oops, so new block like this and just print it out. I, I just like to do um, the separations and I'll just uh, generate the G code. Let me exit from this. Okay, so what is very interesting here, I'm using the very first job here. So it's not the second nor the third, again, is the first job. Uh, even though the, the, the label two is generated afterwards, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just receiving the information that I already know about it, yes? So let's go here on the top. And here it is, my B axis value is minus 10. I hope that uh, gives you more information, better overview how to use this uh, get functions. So let's get a little bit faster with this. Uh, we have another get function, which is get axis name list. It will return uh, the, the list of all axes that have been used in particular label. <clears throat> this is so useful in, in switch type machines uh, when you want to receive, okay, which axes are used, especially because in switch type machines can have shared access, okay? I'm not saying that other military machines cannot do that. They can do that, that as well, but it will be so valuable that you can actually, um, and know which which um, axes are used in particular channel in particular label. Yes. So basically, you will receive a list in a string like 
A, X, Y, Z, B, C, and C2 in this case, okay? I will not spend some time on that, but basically you can also try it by yourself doing that. Uh, get access current status. It's something pretty much similar to the previous. <coughs> basically you are asking, hey, where is my axis located in particular label? So uh, the, um, I think the, the arguments are pretty much reasonable, the same thing, but with, with this Z in this particular label, he will say, hey, your Z axis is in the, in the first channel. Or here for the X2, if you're asking for X2, he'll say, hey, your axis ex actually it's on, um, on, uh, on the second channel. So that's basically how to use it, okay? And this is also very viable also for, for the same reason that I said, because some uh, axis can be shared within the channels. And in this case, it is very important that you recognize that on the label level and print out uh, the, the, the codes that are necessary for that particular node. Uh, for the getting access preview status, this is the same thing, just he will, you will receive what, where it is. Uh, if it's two, then you will receive the information about the previous one, okay? Uh, this is, this is uh, I never used that particular one, but, um, but some, somebody might find it useful. Uh, then we have the get machine precision. Uh, this is very, very important and nice uh, function. Um, basically, the format of it, it's just like get machine precision. You put it as a string here, and then you put the precision type. For the precision type, you must type, is it a movement about rotary feed and spin? And it will return the value of what is the movement precision. <coughs> okay, how this can be used. So first of all, let me let me show you how uh, how this can be used. Um, let's go to the post. And many of you know that uh, formatting it's one of the most important stuff when you want to print out correctly the value. Yeah. And here we have uh, where it is numeric def. Uh, where is the numeric def here? Probably on the beginning. Here it is. This is the perfect example of how we are using, you know, get machine precision. And I want to use it, I want to move it to the string, get machine precision for the movement, and I will receive the number of four. Okay, so you will not receive like 0 0.001 or uh, the fourth decimal of, of, of one, but you will receive its four, as same as it is defined inside the VMID. And basically, I don't need to worry, is it, is it three, four, and five, as, as long as somebody change here in the precision definition and you put here, okay, now I have three. Now the precision is fine, as you've seen so far here. All my output is with, uh, with maximum of three decibels, yes? But just rem remember how long, long time ago I seen many posts that you can change here the movement precision to four, but actually nothing happens. Okay, it happens a lot actually inside the trace, but inside the output nothing because you need to change a lot actually inside the post in order to do that. And it's not dynamic, yes. But now if I click OK and reload it, and I go over here. You can see that I already have here four decimals whenever it's necessary and it works flawlessly. I don't need to change anything. So this is how powerful it is, this linking with the GPP and the VMID so far. Um, let's go back to presentation. Uh, get tool direction in station. Uh, this is very, very uh, important, and it was uh, defined, I think, in 2017. Uh, um, this function was defined, uh, this is one of the first ones. Basically, it will return the tool direction angle in station to its caller as numeric. Okay, so what this is and why it was created, let me just explain you. Over here, I just show, I'm showing you the um, very interesting machine. It is the Nakamura. 
And this machine actually has the revolver, so on the upper turret and the lower turret. But with a big difference that on the upper turret, it is connected to the B axis itself. All good, uh, all fine. But this machine has huge difficulties in, uh, in um, offsetting because it can have at least two angle pairs every single time. And it is very important for the controller to know how the tool it's mounted on specific station. Is it axial, uh, axial or radial, okay? And because of this, we need to know this get tool direction in station. Now the arguments is like a tool tag and three angles that will be, uh, that will re receive the values, okay, of this one. Now, what is the tool tag? Uh, let me see if I have another, yeah, here I have the example. So I have tool direction angle. We have the results. And basically it's straight ahead. You just get tool direction for a specific tool and you will receive here, you know, the angles. Now, you can, you can use this function for two different cases. First, uh, you can define uh, the uh, orientation of the tool uh, for your controller. And the second one, you can actually use this function to print out correctly the, um, the plane angles. Uh, sorry, the, um, the machining plane. Is it G17, 18, or 19? Now, the, <clears throat> the downside of of this, um, this function is that you're receiving the angle, not the vector. So back in that time, we defined it like a angle and we're receiving some issues, but you still can use it. And we will support this uh, get functions uh, all, all the time, but, uh, but we will, in 2021, we will create a new one that you will receive a vector, not an angle, but you can still use it, okay? so. Uh, get uh, tool direction in station, it looks something like this, okay? Now, the example, uh, it's nothing so special as you can see it over here, uh, but uh, how you can use it, okay? Uh, you, the, the most important information is this second one, and it shows a, like uh, a relevant for uh, checking those, and I can I can search for it, and basically the values goes from plus to minus 90 and the absolute value of this element is saying if it's equal to 90 then the tool it's mounted actually along the z direction respecting to the to the station okay as i said uh doing it by the angles it's not a perfect okay you can use this one uh, but uh, you will you will be updated for the Solicam 2021 when we will receive and create the new one, which will actually get the pure vectors itself. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, maybe the question about the tool tag. Uh, for all of you who don't know what the tool tag is, I'll just uh, spend uh, one minute on this. Uh, as you probably know, I'll just jump into a tool table. In our tool table, we have, um, um, we have uh, basically the lower turret here that, as you can see, I have the two tool, tool numbers with a number of one. This is completely fine as soon the station position is changed. Now we cannot use the tool number because the tool number is one. So we created a new uh, tool tag in practice, it doesn't make any sense to use it. It's completely a random number that describes uh, this tool, okay? So it is randomly generated and it completely uh, identifies this tool, okay? So once you use it, basically he will say, okay, this is a tool and this is the vector that you are actually looking for. All right. And the last one that I think is the most important for the Swiss type machines is the function that returns axis pattern name to its color. And according to the channel synchronization data, channel number and synchronization label as, as the arguments. And um, the function is pretty, pretty straightforward. It's just like get axis pattern name. But as you may know, 
uh, Swiss type machines or also uh, some uh, Milton machines, uh, they can print, uh, they, they may need to print uh, something in uh, within the weight codes, okay? Uh, you can also share uh, the axis, you can also turn on the sub superimposition or stuff. All those, it's done actually on the label level and uh, it is printed in this way. So it, it must be printed in both channels. Uh, this is just an example, like a simple program, but GC Gunner 10 must be printed out on both ones. Now, in the, in the next slide here, I describe how you actually can pick up different axis patterns per each label. So just by doing the right click here, just doing the right click here and just pick up any, any here, it will uh, change and the um, the layout here of the axis that is used in this particular label. Now this is very important and necessary inf information later on inside the GPP that you will need it in sync process. So let me go to the example. This particular machine doesn't have any axis patterns and uh, I'll just go to the setup and go to the channel synchronization. Let me move it to the screen. And if I do a right click on the label, you can see that I have no list of any axis patterns. Okay, let me just exit here. Let me just roughly create one. So here I have axis pattern and I'll just name it like one. I'll just name it like one. And I'll just copy this one just to have at least more than one. I'll create a second one and that's it. I didn't change anything here. Still the axis distribution, it's the same axis I can use on the first and the second channel. I just want to get those lists. Now, once you seven, cop, seven exit, solid cam must be closed. I mean, the COM part has to be closed and I will just go to the solid cam and just open it. All right. Now, nothing has been changed, but now I can actually go to the channel synchronization. And now when I do a right click on, this, on, the, on the label, I will be able to switch between two labels. Yeah. So let's say for the label number two, I will use the axis pattern two, but for a pattern one, I'll use the pattern one. Yeah, that's it. I'll just save and exit. I'll just... Um, Go here, I just do the previous one to the format and I'll just jump to the post itself and where you can put it. You can put anywhere where you want, think process. I will just put it in this case in seeing process, okay? Uh, basically, it will return everything as a string, okay? So I'll just here create local string and I don't know, I will just call it uh, access pattern that it's used. And um, access pattern will be get access pattern name. And then I'll use uh, sync data name. Uh, the channel ID, uh, the, for channel ID, I'll just use the one. And sync label, I'll use one as well, okay? And I'll just print it out. Actually, I can do this, all this stuff in, in the header as well. It's, I just want to show you that this is not important at all. Okay. And I'll just print it out. So I'll just create like this. I'll just uh, put it into a uh, axis pattern for Label one will be this. And then I will just uh, copy this. And I would like to receive it for a second one. And then I'll just print one like this, use the Alt key, go down, and that's it. And maybe I'll copy also this one here. All right, I'll just, uh, I'll just again generate the first operation. Click OK, click OK, see the code. Let's see here on the top. For the first one, it's access label minus one, minus one. 
even though I use actually the second one. Let me see, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I didn't save it. Oh, I didn't change it. Oh, okay, so I can doesn't allow me to change it as I will use it for the balance one. Let me see this one. Is it possible? No. Ah, okay. Uh, sorry about this, guys, but I I'll need deeply to change the the layout here probably. Um, and for each change, it will basically again reopen the the comp part, which I want don't want to do it. But you, you can just you, I probably get my point. You just change. You, you can make many access patterns here. Change the access distribution that will actually allow you to to switch it inside the channel synchronization. And then basically you will receive the same and proper one in the output. Right. Okay. Um, the one that it's still in development that I will not be able to show you the, uh, the example, but uh, you will probably um, receive it in the next hot fixes is uh, the functions in order to get a turret submachine turret type. As you know, in SOLIDCAM, we support three different types of uh, turrets, which is a spindle, a linear, and rotary. And basically, it's a very simple function. You just uh, write get submachine turret type for the specific submachine. And this submachine basically uh, have a turret that is, for example, a spindle. So when you we can use this uh, such a such a function, the best place actually to use it, it's for example, in procedures for a tool call. So you can basically say, okay, this is a spindle. So my format for the tool call is completely different from the one for the, for the revolver, okay? So you can easily uh, customize and make more automatic or how to say, um, more complex code, you know, in order to cover all those cases more, more easier basically by this, by this function. Unfortunately, as you said, I cannot show you an example right now, but make sure that uh, I'll keep you updated about this in some future webinars as well, um, how this function actually, and when it will work, just take a look on the uh, release notes. Uh, it will be there as well. And uh, the next three ones that I'm going to show you, it's a little bit, uh, it's in uh, the, the newest SolidCAN 2021. I think this is also a um, very nice surprise. I will show you actually, I'll just sneak peek a little bit into a SOICAN 2021, how it looks like. For you who never uh, seen the 2021, don't, don't take it, uh, uh, yeah, don't, don't take it uh, um, uh, as a final product, uh, many, things inside may be different in the official version, okay? And uh, the most important thing in uh, 2021 is the new tool table. And with a new tool table, uh, you can, what is new, the newest thing here, there is that all, every tool is built like a structure, okay? Like a holder, um, you can put uh, it in various 3D models and you can connect each one of those, yeah? And each between each of the elements are basically something that we call joints. Okay. And why we have this particular function for the joint to, to distinguish is there any such a joint there? It's for the angular heads. Okay. So angular heads will not be any more part of the post processor, but actually it will be part of the new tool table. Okay. And um, it looks pretty much simple. There is like a tool tag here, and then you say, okay, is such a such a um, um, joint name exist, and basically the it will return yes or no. It it will be true or false for this particular function. So let me just uh, load the the two so again 2021, And so it works, and this will be 2021, it's a joint name, I'll just load it. Okay, while it's loading, I would just like to also tell you a few things about the presentation itself. <clears throat> once it's once you see this, everybody of you, uh, this is 
completely recorded and you will see it in a reseller area and together with this presentation and uh, and don't try to take this code like this so i'll just copy this and if you go to the present if you go to the visual studio code and if you try to print it out like this you will see something pretty it, it looks pretty fine yeah but these semicolons are a way different than the one that is defined actually by the visual studio code itself as you can see this ones and this ones are different and you probably will see oh but, but i use copy and paste but why it doesn't work so please pay attention that those are not completely correctly converted from presentation um to uh, as you can see there are difference okay so be careful with that okay uh, so i can load it oh it's another screen sorry and i'll just open it uh the example here it is it's a pretty simple example I, it, it has only one one job there nothing so special okay pretty simple part here and here we have a new toolkit it's a new tool table let me just bring you to see it over here and here we have the tool id it's it's five and here we have an angular head with all the stls and as i as i mentioned this earlier this is the whole structure that we have towards the cutting point and if i go to show and hide tool in the picture this is what i'm talking about yes so this is the whole structure of it and and particular z axis here if i just move this a little a little bit on the right here i can go to the joints and this particular z axis it's connected to the joint that it's called z axis yes it is going as a rotary axis and it actually exists so let me just open a post uh, actually i have it over here it's already open and i can go to this joint name exists and i already created this example and basically it's just like a logical a nothing so special this joint name exists for that particular tool and here we have this zax and then i'm checking also again if we have something like wax and does this joint exist and let's see so i'll just generate this g code and generate click ok Here's the G code. And here we go. Here we have it. Join ZX exists. Yes, we have this joint actually for this particular tool. And if we have this joint, no. So th this particular function will actually help not only for the angular heads to, to distinguish if you have this particular angular head, but it can be for any other also purposes itself. Okay. And for the for the last, I say for I would say my I would say my two favorite one. Uh, many people are waiting for uh, was waiting for these uh, functions. Is the get access limits and getting the uh, home reference uh, limits. This is uh, very very nice. Um, many many people actually define many crazy stuff inside the GPP and uh, you know then it's pretty hard to copy that gpp into another vmid because all the limit stuff it's different especially if it's limit sensitive you know and all those stuff uh, there's also many other reasons why i would like to read some uh, uh, limits inside uh, gpp especially if you want to move your uh, revolvers to the safety you want to read this uh, if it's to the left so you can print with let's say g28 p1 and if it goes to the very far right it can be p3 for example and those kind of stuff so it's very very uh, nice uh, nice uh, function and uh, now we have it um, unfortunately of course it will be only available in Silicon 2021 and it's called like get access limits and basically what you need to put is the string as an access name uh, and then two arguments like a minimum limit and maximum limit that will receive this information okay together with this we have also the get access home reference which is also getting the home reference itself 
we have we need here the access name and also the home reference as um, uh, as a variable that will fat this value. Yes. So let me go here. Let me go to the to the post itself. And I can put it here. We are actually now located in start of job. So basically, I'll just continue here at the bottom. And let's see like this, guys. So I would like to know what is the limits of Z axis, for example. Okay, so let's let's go over here and let's just type lo uh, local. Uh, it will be numeric, and then we'll say the Z one. Uh, min limit, for example, and then I will say a Z1 max limit. Here, I just missed the capital. All right, then I will create uh, again local that is integer and that it's um, results or result, it's up to you. And I already mentioned why we need this one, either zero or one. Now I'll actually generate for you the error so you can actually see it, how it looks like. And then I will just say get axis limits. And then I would say here for Z axis. And then I want to receive, you need to use the comma. And then I will take this one as well and just copy here. Then I can print out this. Of course, this will generate an error. if. If you didn't see where I make the mistake, you will see it soon. I just say max limit here, and I will just print here like a new block. And also I like to do that as well. So I'll just take the Alt key and just put it back down here. I'll just go over here and generate the G code. Okay, so it works something. Let's see. But you receive something like this. So guys, this is how actually it looks once the function fails, okay? And it will clearly mark the line and something is wrong, okay? The, the, the I result returned zero, which is actually not possible and function failed. So this is how it looks like when function failed. And what is actually happening, of course, it will not abort the G code, it will just ignore this one and the values will be completely off to zero. And what is wrong? So let's go back to the VMID. And here I'm using the Z1, but inside my post, actually I'm using Z. So this axis doesn't exist inside the VMID and that's the problem. So I just put Z1, G code, generate, click OK. Click OK. <clears throat> Now let's see the code. Here it is, minus 560, 485. Is this the correct one? Yes. Now, what is very important? You can change here to whatever value you want, and you don't need to exit from the SolidCam or anything. You don't need to recalculate the values. Okay, once you click save and exit, you can just go GCO generate. You don't need to recalculate the operations for it. So you just click OK and that's it. You just receive the new values. Okay. So here we go. New values. And the last for today is the um for the for the home reference. So I'll just say uh Z1 home ref. And let's see this one. Yeah, just the access name and the this one, okay. So uh, I can use the I result as well. Basically the same variable, I I just say the, this is get, get access home ref. And then I need the access name, I'll say Z1 and the home reference that I'll use is like this. And this is the two variables that I need to replace. Now, this wouldn't be so interesting as my Z1, it's completely zero. So let me put to something that it's that we can recognize and I'll just generate the G code.
and here you go. That will be a sneak peek to 2021 and everything what you need to know regarding to the um, to the get functions. This was all get functions available in SolidCam. Uh, we still continue to develop more get functions. If you have any idea what you would like to receive more, just feel free to, to contact SolidCam support and we'll create new functions for you. Um, I, um, my plan for today was also to show you the standardization, but I will leave it for the next part of, uh, of this webinar series. Just for this moment, I will just go to the questions. Uh, this is, no, this is all okay. So as I said earlier, this, um, this has been recorded and it will be available in a reseller area together with this presentation. So thank you guys for watching us and uh, we'll keep in touch. Take care and have a great day. Bye.